Welcome everyone, it's Chris and it's Watercolor in 5 on this channel where you're just occasionally we, we stop and we uh, do a quick video on some interesting watercolor information, brushes, paints, palettes, techniques, you name it. We do it here at Watercolor in 5. Come on by. If you're new here, please consider subscribing. Um, we have a great um, uh, time here we actually we're just covering you know something for five or ten minutes everything watercolor everything about watercolors um and this way it's not a, a burdensome you know hour-long video so i know everyone likes to sometimes just have a quick video to learn something new and that's it and then we're off and running doing what we have to do and going about our day and so forth in our evening and uh, so i'm the same way too i like to keep things short brief straight to the point and um that's what the watercolor is about also. Just keeping things simple, straight to the point, and then we can just move on, learn something new, and our watercolors are going to be better. Okay, so um, here we're going to cover just the, the square brush, the flat brush. This is a Da Vinci uh, flat brush or square brush as we call it. Um, I don't use square brushes and flat brushes a lot in my watercolors, but, but I do occasionally. And um, I used to use them more frequently in my paintings. Um, you can basically use a square brush, you know, for, for pretty much everything in a painting. You can almost stick with just like a round brush. And I use the round brush 90% of the time, like this. You can, there's many artists, watercolor artists, that use a square brush 90% of the time. So you can use a, a square brush, you know for your technique, for your watercolor paintings, and you can use it pretty much as your main brush. It all depends on your style, how you like to paint. My style requires a round brush. Um, that's the way I find myself more, more comfortable, most comfortable painting. But these are great brushes as well too. And you know, I never know, maybe someone's gonna call me someday and say, Chris, I need you to make a, um, a, a series of paintings and I need it to be more like square looking, square edges, um, cubism, something like that. Well, I got to be a little familiar with the square brush, the flat brush, and try to, you know, work in something, you know, for, for a customer that might need some paintings. So here, I'm familiar with this too, because I, all through my life, I've always painted, like in construction, painting, walls, and, you know, uh, this is just basically like a normal paintbrush you would buy at a paint store if you're going to paint a room, paint some trim. Uh, maybe you're going to paint something outdoors, a barn, um, you know, you name it. This is just a versatile brush that most everyone's familiar with, actually. Most people are much more familiar with a square brush or flat brush than they would be, a, you know, with a round brush. But as artists, you know, round brushes are obviously a lot more familiar um, to everyone. So let's get, let's give it a try. Let's um, just see a couple interesting things we can do. So we'll take a little bit of raw umber. We'll make a little mix. Some water and some raw umber. Maybe some cobalt blue over here. French ultramarine in there. Maybe a little bit of mineral violet, purple color. Let's create somewhat of like a fence idea. So here we can create a Gorgeous looking fence for a landscape painting. And we don't 
don't have to really get too fussy. We'll use our square brush. And then once this dries, we can add in some more details to it as well. So that's just one simple thing we can do with a square brush, a, a gorgeous fence. And maybe we'll add a little green there just to give it that feeling of some grass along the fence. Okay, so let's let this dry. So we'll let this dry for a bit. Then we'll uh, let's do something different. Let's um, let's do maybe a building. We'll take some of that raw umber and maybe some alizarin crimson. Make it a nice warm. Feel. Let's maybe like a like a um, make this a a cityscape. So we're gonna have some buildings. A little bit of burnt umber in there. Then we can turn the brush the other way and make some get some great straight lines with these very sharp lines and that's pretty interesting right and then we can go in with some of the cooler colors and drop in some cooler colors here maybe we'll put some shadowing And again, that's some more versatility with this square brush, you know, some cityscapes and then maybe there's some buildings back here. In the background, so that would be more of a cooler, cooler color. You could take your time and shape things really nice. And you angle your brush. You can take your square brush and you angle it like that. You can just take the, the very edge, the very edge of the brush, and you can get some really fine lines with that. Okay, our fence is still drying a little bit, so we'll let that go for now. And we'll just drop in a couple splashes. So you can see I'm just having some fun here with our square brush. It's a Da Vinci again, a Da Vinci square brush, synthetic hair. It's got the red tip on it. They make this in a um, natural hair as well too, so you can get this same exact size with natural hair. This synthetic hair, whenever you're thinking of brushes in general, synthetic holds a little bit less water. Natural hair brushes hold more water and paint. So if you think you're going to use um, a lot of water and paint in a painting, you know, you can go with a natural hair uh, brush, square brush, of course, if we're talking square brushes. If you need more control and you're wanting to use less water and paint, then the synthetic is a little better because it, it doesn't have, you know, as much water and paint in it when you're going to your palette. And this way there's not as much water and, you know, color and pigment and water going onto your paper and flooding out onto your paper. That's sometimes can be a little bit of uh, an issue. So that's just something to keep in mind as you paint with a uh, square brush like this. 
But uh, so that's some simple things we can do. Let's go with a, uh, we'll go with a darker color here, maybe some French ultramarine blue and burnt umber. Maybe a touch of alizarin crimson in there too. And we just pick up a little bit of that. And then we'll just form ourselves a nice point on our brush. See how pointy that is? And then we can go in here and we can maybe try to get some more lines here for our picket fence. And there we go. That's even more exciting, right? So now you're getting a feeling of more light and shadow on that fencing. So that's just really, you know, this is great for, you know, a painting where you can maybe do a lot of fencing. Maybe you're going to do a house with some really cool picket fences around it. You know, you can use a square brush to tackle that portion of your painting. And even the house, too. This is a great brush for doing, you know, square edges. So, you know, you can get windows, doors, the shape of the house, buildings. You know, it's pretty much... And you can even get in some, we'll use some of this here just to do some windows. So I just picked up a little bit of this darker color here. And we can get some windows in. You know, you can go darker and lighter, however you... And that's more of a, um, maybe more of a uh, abstract feel. And some more windows we can put in, like this. And some doors, maybe a garage door here. And a couple of regular doors there. Garage door might be a little larger, like that. And then you can see, you can start building up on your windows and, and then you change around, you know, use some different colors. And you can get into some darker shadowy colors, French ultramarine blue, burnt umber. Maybe you'll have some shadows in this painting. Um, maybe we can say the light is coming from the right over here. So maybe there's some shadow on these buildings like that. And you can just scrub in some paint with the very tippy tip of the brush on the corner of the brush. And you work a little bit at a time. And you can start to really uh, let the paper dry a little bit. That's sometimes very helpful. This is still a little damp here, so. You know, some uh, interesting uh, details you can put in. You can start putting in some more details. So I'm just giving you an idea here of this flat brush. It really works great. You can come up with a lot of interesting ideas with it. Um, and um, have fun and 
maybe it's not going to be your everyday brush, but it could be something where, again, if you have to do a painting for someone that asks you to create a painting for them and they want more of a squarish look to it or they need something that's going to... Um, would be better to do with a square brush, well then you're kind of already ahead of the game. You're Okay, so I hope we had some fun. We had a great time with the square brush. Again, this is a Da Vinci square brush. And that's about uh, an inch and a half brush. They come in different sizes, of course. This is a synthetic hair, which has, again, we said has a little bit uh, less carrying capacity. It doesn't hold as much water and paint, but it's actually really good because it can give you a little more control as you create your paintings. All right, so this is uh, Watercolor and 5 again. Hey, if you like this video, please uh, thumbs up, and we'll uh, see you on the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.